Hi fellow Tropers, and welcome to the third official episode of Tropecast. We're still, this is series one, talking about action prologues, and this is part three, sorry, beginning tropes, action prologue part three, action, uh, live action TV, here we go. A few cold openings of Doctor Who. The Empty Child begins with the TARDIS chasing after a Chula warship through a time track. The Girl in the Fireplace starts with off-screen screaming and Madame de Pompadour calling for the Doctor's help through a fireplace. Spoilers if you haven't seen any of these yet. Sorry guys. Love and Monsters invokes this. The narrator character pointing out the encounter with the Doctor or hoiks and some buckets in the beginning. Just a good hook for the audience. Gridlock begins with a couple's flying car on a motorway being attacked by unseen me- by an unseen menace. Human nature starts with the Doctor and Martha being attacked by lasers off some lasers off screen. With the Doctor mentioning something about a watch, before it turns out to be a dream. Silence in the library has a little girl apparently experiencing an action prologue in her, uh, through her dreams, as the Doctor and Donna board themselves up in some kind of library room. Planet of the Dead starts with Lady Christina stealing a precious cup from a museum and escaping. The animated serial Dreamland begins with an alien ship being pursued and attacked, crashing into New Mexico, the New Mexico desert in 1947. The 11th hour starts with the TARDIS on fire and crashing while the brand new 11th Doctor is hanging out the doors, clinging on by his fingernails. The Time of Angels starts with River Song being chased through the, sp- through the spaceship Byzantium. The Pandorica opens, revolves around River escaping prison, discovering the painting of the same name and warning the Doctor and Amy about it. A Christmas Carol begins with a crashing spaceship with Amy and Rory on board. The Impossible Astronaut features the Doctor running through various adventures in history in succession while Amy and Rory read from a history book about them in 2011. The Year of the Moon has blank three months after the events of the Impossible Astronaut blank. A good man goes to war begins with blank. (laughs) I have to read it like it's down here, guys. (laughs) We don't know what's written there. The Flash 2014 Killer Frost begins with an action scene revolving, no, resolving the previous episode's cliffhanger. Joe defeating Dr. Alchemy's acolytes. While Alchemy himself escapes the Flash's first battle with new big bad Salvatar or Savatar. And finally Cisco and Caitlin's big damn heroes moment saving Barry from Savatar. The first episode of Game of Thrones cold opens with a suspenseful scene that features rangers of the Night's Watch getting ambushed by White Walkers. Spoilers if you haven't seen any of the episodes yet, you might want to click away. Okay, if you haven't clicked away that means you want to spoil for you. But I already have, so... Human Target Almost always starts this way, with Christopher doing something awesome 
often involving explosions. Lost in Space 2018 The first episode opens with the Robinson family crashing on an unknown planet after their Jupiter landing craft is struck by space debris, then having to deal with the immediate necessities of survival, we're introduced to the setting and characters through flashbacks. MacGyver, 1985 Most of the time, as can be expected from a show like this, self-parodied in Children, in Children of Light, which opens with the implication that Mac is defusing a bomb that's set to go off in a minute with Pete present, but it turns out he's just fixing Pete's alarm clock, radio, with the alarm set to go off in a minute, which is why he's rushing Mac. Okay, if you haven't seen Terminator Sarah Connor Chronicles yet, you might want to click away. Okay, if you're still here, that means you don't want it, that means you don't care about it being spoiled. The first episode of Terminator, the Sarah Connor Chronicles, opens with Sarah frantically driving to John's school and finding him in the library. They exit to find an entire police squad waiting for them. They're arrested, and then a Terminator arrives on the scene and proceeds to kill everyone in sight, including John. Then, as a distraught Sarah watches, the nuclear holocaust begins, burning everything around her and revealing the Terminator's terrifying endoskeleton, and she wakes up. This all happens before the title even shows up on screen. So it turns out to be a dream, then. Well, I have seen the first episode, so I should know. Any Star Trek fans watching? And haven't seen as late into the franchise as Deep Space Nine or Voyager or Enterprise. You might want to click away now. Spoilers ahead. Okay, you've had your warning. The pilot episodes of Star Trek Deep Space Nine and Star Trek Voyager each start with an opening scroll leading into a space battle. What is this? Um, the Star Trek now think it's Star Wars. Two completely different franchises, people. <laughs> the pilot of Star Trek Enterprise starts with a Klingon being chased by two Sullivan after crash landing in Oklahoma. Subverted in the first episode of Young Blades, which opens in the middle of an intense sword fight, then quickly derails into an argument about who gets to play D. Artagnan, revealing that it is merely a game between siblings. Then the real action begins. Okay, I guess. <laughs> Theater. The Lion in Winter opens with King Henry sparring with his son Prince John, which establishes Henry as an aging conqueror and John as his favourite son. Othello. It, it its operatic adaptation by Giuseppe Verdi and Arago Oito opens on the thunderous confrontation of a battle at sea, in which the title character ultimately proves victorious. The battle takes place off stage, but that doesn't prevent the orchestra and chorus from working themselves into a 
highly agitated state or a full panoply a panoply of, of stage effects some of them rhythmically noted uh, notated into in the scene from being deployed and this episode will end on the examples on video games spoilers if you haven't played any of these games yet guys of course i haven't i'm not a console gamer but here we go many entries in the assassin's creed series open like this with the character having access to weapons skills and life meter that are lost at the end of the level and then laboriously reclaimed over the course of the game metal gear solid 3 snake eater which could rightfully be called a massive affectionate parody to 60s and 70s spy movies calls an exceptionally well executed one though it takes up an hour you overpower the guards, get the captured scientist, and make it back to the extraction point where Snake gets betrayed, thrown off, uh, yeah, should be off, and says, of a bridge. And as he is, and as he pulls himself out of a river, the enemies detonate and nuke some miles in the distance. And as the explosion fades, you get the extremely Bond-like actual opening. Silent Hill 3 starts with Heather in a spooky amusement park, armed with very little in the way of weapons, and wondering where she is. If you either die or reach the end, which results in her dying in a cutscene, she wakes up and realises it's just a dream. Much later in the game, you go to that very same amusement park for real. The it's all a dream cliche. Please. Some of the James Bond games, everything or nothing actually started you right in the first level without giving you a menu or anything like it before. 007 from Russia with Love also did this. And Goldeneye 1997, which also included several missions in the time space between the film's prologue and the present day story. Perfect Dark starts with Joanna's very first mission as Carrington Institute agent. Also, its prequel started with a mission, but is revealed. It was a fake action prologue, being just a simulation. The God of War series typically starts out by, as Yahtzee put it, throwing you into the middle of a pitched battle, just in case you thought you might be playing something with modicum of restraints. Final Fantasy the very first Final Fantasy begins with the Heroes of Light tasked with rescuing the Princess of Cornelia from the dreaded Garland. The title screen from the game doesn't appear until after Garland has been laid low. Final Fantasy 2 begins with a hopeless boss fight. Final Fantasy 4, sorry 6, Final Fantasy 6 may start with an opening scroll and cutscene but immediately throws you into battle without really knowing who you are fighting against. Who you are fighting for or who you are supposed to be. Which does a pretty fine job of setting up the initial situation of the game's main character before she gets freed. Final Fantasy VII starts you off in the middle of a raid to blow up one of the evil corporation's Marco reactors. Final Fantasy X begins with the destruction 
of Zanakan. Uh, or Zanakan. Final Fantasy XII begins with you, Rex, on a mission to save the king from assassins. Then you die and take control of his little brother Varn two years later. Final Fantasy XIII begins with the main characters escaping from the Purge and fighting the Sanctum soldiers. Final Fantasy XIII too may well top them all. It begins with lighting, lightning engaged in battle with the big bad. After the epic opening movie, you're thrust into a battle with Chaos Bahamut and lightning riding Odin. This is the tutorial. Lightning Returns Final Fantasy XIII continues the trend by starting off with lightning crashing a party at the Patriarch's Palace in Yasnan and then chasing snow through the building. Final Fantasy XV kicks off with an older looking no Noctis in royal garb alongside his comrades engaging in an imposing fiery giant sitting on a throne in a how we got here situation. The next scene is a younger looking Noctis and his friends pushing their car to the nearest gas station. Final Fantasy Tactics begins with the kidnapping of Princess Avelia, which kicks off most of the plot proper. At this point, only Ramza is under your direct control, sporting the most basic job class and abilities. But it gives you a preview of several more powerful attacks and classes that you won't actually gain control of yourself until much later. The prologue of Castlevania Symphony of the Night starts at ending of the previous game, Rondo of Blood. The player isn't even controlling Alucard at that point, but Richter Belmont. Breath of Fire 3 opens with the hero escaping from a mine in a dragon form. In dragon form. The dragon stats are such that you cannot lose the battles in this sequence. An example of action prologue involving the main villain and not the hero. Savarok beating the crap out of an anonymous warrior and then throwing him from the top of a tower in Baldur's Gate. The game prototype begins with New York in ruin and chaos as well as giving your character full abilities. Then after the title appears, flashes back to 18 days ago. Almost the same thing happens in Spider-Man Web of Shadows. Bayonetta begins with our anti-heroine and GN in their flashback garb fighting angels on the fence of a falling clock. It might be a clever symbol for a compressed backstory narration, but it's hard to tell when the actual game is so trippy. Despite the game's reputation for putting some of the most spectacular fights in cutscenes, it's fully playable with no guidance for the first time play for first time players, but also no way to lose. Then there's a whole prologue chapter filled with control tutorials and some minor exposition. Then there's the expository cutscene and an indie style travel montage. 
Then the opening tiles play as Netta struts in the train off the train in the grid. That should be titles. Where's the uh, where's the other T? Chrono Cross begins with an action slash tutorial dream sequence that mimics slash foreshadows an extended gameplay sequence from a much in brackets later dungeon. <laughs> Devil May Cry Devil May Cry five opens with the heroes Nero, Dante and V fighting against Urizen and subsequently getting their asses kicked with Dante's fate hanging in the balance. The game picks up about a month later with an opening credit sequence where Nero and his new partner Nico plough their way through a, board, a horde of demons. Most of the Uncharted games open with a very brief enigmatic cutscene and then some kind of balls out action sequence. Uncharted Drake's Fortune opens with Nate and Eleanor unearthing Sir Francis Journal in the middle of the ocean when suddenly pirates attack and the player has to defend the boat. Uncharted 3 Drake's Deception Opens with a bar brawl in an English pub populated by mooks. After a deal goes bad, it is a great excuse to teach the player how the new unarmed combat system, uh, the new unarmed combat system. Uncharted 4 A Thief's End begins with Nate and his brother Sam running away from mooks in a boat during a heavy storm. Nate then has to, that should be has to defend their exposed position. Unless they're talking about Sam as well. When the boat broke down, Guild Wars Nightfall throws the character into a Corsair battle for its first quest and mission before the training sequence is more common in other MMOs and other Guild Wars chapters. Parodied in the Team Fortress 2 comic, A Fate Worse Than Chess, with exposition. Pitfall, the Lost Expedition, begins with Pitfall Harry fighting for his life against a demonic fiery jaguar, while supercharged with battle magic. After he exchanges a few blows with the beast, it pins him to the ground, and Harry has a flashback to how he got into this mess in the first place, which makes up most of the rest of the game. Tomb Raider Underworld begins with Lara escaping her burning mansion, then skips ahead four days. Vindictus begins with a siege on a bell tower against a giant spider. The oracle, Teeth, wants to talk to the spider and find out why it's so frightened. So a group of soldiers, including you, are assigned to escort her to the top. Everyone is promptly ambushed by Knowles after the leader of the soldiers finds a Fomorian emblem, and everyone except you and Teeth are wounded or killed. The game then gives you control of your character and walks you through the combat system as you kill your way through the knolls and escort Teeth to the top of the tower, or Tiev, however it's pronounced, where you have to fight the spider as a ballista spears rain down on the roof. As Ballista Spears. The latter three Saints Row games each have one of these. Saints Row 2 has the boss escaping from jail blank. 
Saints Row the third has the boss Sean D. Johnny, Gat and Josh Burke performing a blank bank robbery blank. Saints Row 4 has the boss in blank by doing this and making use of their relative hero status. The boss uses it as a stepping stone to obtain the presidency, getting the scene for the rest setting the scene for the rest of the game. Shadow Complex begins with a man in a city with about half of the full set of equipment for a shootout with some troops and a helicopter. He is then killed and the action switches to the actual player character where the real Metroidvania part begins. Done extremely well on the Lord of the Rings video games as the prologues are there not just to state how the fight elements are there, but also to tell most of the backstory and certain background elements. The prologue of the reconstruction thrusts you into dangerous into a dangerous action packed mission of boarding and fighting your way through an enemy ship. This is done with only a cursory introduction to the, to, to the characters and it's not really clear what's going on until the end of the prologue. The DS and PS1 versions of Dragon Quest IV add a prologue chapter in which you play as the hero for a short while as you look around Elisa. Fire Emblem Awakening opens with a premonition to Chorm, sorry, to Crom, and the player character fighting against Valadar. Fire Emblem Fates opens with a dream in which the player character, alongside their Hoshidan siblings, drive off Nohirat, Norian, Invaders, they wake up just as rivaling elder brothers, Ryoma and Xander, demand that they join their side. Fire Emblem Heroes immediately kicks off with you, yes you, getting teleported into the world of heroes and being ordered by Anna to assist her in battle. Dark Souls introduction cutscene has this. Featuring Gwyn, Nito, and Witch of Is Isolif or Isolif taking on the dragons. Xenoblade begins in the middle of the war against the Mekon, where you play as Doctor Dunban in the battle that would make him a legend among the people of Bionis. Xenoblade Chronicles X opens with an interstellar war over Earth that ravages the planet and forces humanity to evacuate in massive ships, one of which is chased by the hostile aliens and forced to crash land on the planet Mirror. Ace Attorney has a prologue in every case, usually showing the actual murder from a perspective which leaves the player enough in the dark to not get spoiled. In one to one, we see Frank Sawhit murder Cindy Stone. Bonus points in that the first few seconds of the franchise, we see a woman on the floor with a massive amount of blood speeding at seeping out of her head on screen and we never see more blood at any point in the series. In 1-2, we see Red White committing the murder. Two cases in a row, we see the true killer's face. In 1-4, we see the blank, that should be the murder, of Richard Hammond. In 1-5, we see blank stabbing a knife into a body. 
2-1 shows Phoenix being knocked unconscious with a fire extinguisher. In 2-2, there's a car accident, a fire and blank. In 3-2, gives us mask de mask stealing something. In 3-3, we see somebody with Phoenix's silhouette poisoning in somebody's coffee. In 3-5, we see some awesome animated lightning and the corpse, even though the player meets the victim later and it's obviously the corpse in the prologue. In AA11, we see the murderer and the victim have a conversation and Edgeworth is held at gunpoint soon after. In AA12, Edgeworth has the pleasure of discovering the body and promptly getting accused of the murder. In AA13, we see the continuation of the ending of the last case. Edgeworth is playing from Ransom, Delivery Boy, and manages to get kidnapped. In AA14, we get court romantic where the witnesses or accuses the prosecutor of being the real murderer. In AA15, we get to see the embassy burn and various spottings of the Yatagarasu. In AA21, we get to see a press, we get a press conference being derailed by an assassination attempt. In The Walking Dead, Lee spends about three to four minutes in the back of a police cruiser before a collision with a walker sets him free and lands him in the middle of a zombie apocalypse. Far Cry 3 seems to start in the traditional introduction of characters sense, but within two minutes you discover that you've been captured by pirates that are not at all friendly. You and your older brother break out, sneak around the base looking for an exit and then blank. You're running for your life through the dark jungle, chased by guys with guns, dogs, a bear and a helicopter. Only once this sequence ends does the game take on a less edge of your seat action stance. Far Cry 1's first level, despite being a tutorial, is surprisingly action-packed and difficult. Dark Chronicle opens with Monica Raybrand fighting off Emperor Gryphon's soldiers, or Griffin's soldiers, in her home, and charges ahead to see her father having just been assassinated and said and said assassin leaving. We then transition to Max about to go to the circus. Yeah, because that's how every action game should start, right? Soldier of Fortune 2's prologue mission throws you almost straight into a, into the fray with Mullins rescue. Dr. Ivanvic, uh, Ivanovic, uh, Ivanovic, yeah, rescuing Dr. Ivanovic from a heavy gu heavily guarded hotel in Prague, then escaping with him across the countryside to train to a train station. The first game also had an action prologue with a hostage situation in a New York subway, giving a sneak peek. At one of the main villains at the end. Modern Warfare. The first game's prologue, Crew Expendable, is a first close quarters battle in contrast to Blackout. The first plot mission, which is relatively quiet. Modern Warfare 2 has team player. A fast-paced assault on Afghan town on an Afghan town held hostage by the Taliban 
Ahem. The op for. It has nothing to do with the main plot, but it shows Private Allen's regular grind as an army ranger before he's recruited into the CIA for his special mission in Russia. Okay. So where was I? Red Faction 2 starts with Alias when he, or is that Elias, when he was one of the Sopot's elite guards infiltrating a military complex to steal the nanocell. Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon has an on-rails helicopter mission before the title screen and fourth tutorial. Parasite Eve begins with Aya's date at Carnage Hall, at Carnegie Hall, gets rudely interrupted when, when Eve awakens and begins The, meta, the mitochondrial uprising by burning alive nearly everyone present. Parasite Eve 2 starts with Aya responding to an outbreak of neo-mitochondrial creatures at the, Acro at the Acropolis Tower in downtown Los Angeles. Grand Theft Auto 5 begins with Michael and Trevor robbing an armoured car depot in Yankton nine years prior to the story proper. Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis begins with Indy sifting through the university's large collection of artefacts. The task is not as benign as it seems. Indy gets hurt a lot. The game uses the several moments when he's out cold to display credits. Luthia and the Fortress of Doom starts with the player off as Maxim, the main character's ancestor, arriving at Doom Island for their final battle with Sinistrals. Sands of Destruction opens with you controlling Nager as he and Rajiv or Rahiv, whatever, fight off Morte in Vito. In Vito. It then cuts to Kyrie going about his normal business. In Barney, picking up vegetables and hunting the sand caps to cook, which naturally turns into a fighting sand whale. Spec Ops, the line, opens with a helicopter gunner section before the scene turns into a short flashback and beginning of the story proper blank. <laughs> You'll hear that word come out of my mouth a lot during the show, guys.
The first mission of Medal of Honor Frontline takes place at Omaha Beach on D-Day. Before the events of the original game, the rest of the missions take place between the first game's third and fourth missions. Rainbow Six series. Rainbow Six Vegas 1. Before focusing on the eponymous city as a prologue in a Mexican border town in which the team's mission goes, Fubar and Logan Keller's squad mates are captured. Rainbow Six Vegas 2's first act, which serves as a tutorial, is set on a hostage rescue mission in the Pyrenees five years before the events of the main story in Vegas. Sunset Overdrive begins 17 days before the main story with a linear tutorial level with the player performing Le Parcours on the rooftops to escape to their apartment as a zombie apocalypse begins. This has become a staple of 2D Mega Man games, post 8-bit era, opening almost immediately into an action-packed interstage, instead of going straight to the stage select, as with the 8-bit games. As often as not, you'll have no idea what the hell is even going on plot-wise until it's finished. River City Ransom Underground's prologue acts as a flashback to the original River City Ransom. Taking place in the original game's final area, River City High, the player is put in the shoes of young Ryan or Alex and then goes through a boss rush of all of the original game's bosses, after which there is a time skip of 25 years and the game's plot begins properly. Persona 5 jumps into the action with the protagonist trying to escape from a casino, showing off the Lila Parkour, a bit of the stealth mechanic, and a short fight. Then the protagonist gets captured and arrested, and the majority of the game is spent explaining how the interrogating prosecutor, how we got there, or how we got here, jumping back seven months to when the protagonist first came to Tokyo. The remastered remake of DuckTales adds a prologue stage, where Scrooge defends his bank from a heist by the Beagle Boys. The prologue to Battlefield 1 almost instantly throws you into the control of various soldiers in the middle of a brutal German attack, who each get gunned down, burned alive and blown up, before your controls finally switch to the narrating Harlem Hellfighter, who survives the battle and narrates the other war stories from here on out. Sonic the Hedgehog In Sonic Adventure, the first accessible story campaign, Sonic opens with our hero going toe-to-toe -to -toe with chaos in the streets of Station Square. Both campaigns in Sonic Adventure 2 pulls this. The hero story opens with Sonic breaking out of captivity and escaping through the city while the dark story opens with Dr. Eggman blasting his way into a military base. Metroid Prime has an action prologue aboard the space pirate ghost ship Orpheon which incorporates a tutorial and gives the player a taste of power. The beginning of Shelter 2 has the player guide Inner 
and in uh, and links through the winter forest and she is chased by wolves to safety. Doing this, the player also learns the game's running and jumping controls. The Legend of Heroes Trials, Fra Trials of Gold Cold Steel starts off with the characters trying to force a group of terrorists out of Garalia out of the Garalia Fortress before it goes back a few months before the prologue events. Ditto with Cold Steel 2, 3, where the players control a group of students who are trying to blow up a robot at the top of the sky before it goes back a few months before said events. The characters are at a high level so players can get familiarised with the controls bit a bit. Ghost Recon Future Soldiers Prologue shows the player the ropes with a ghost mission in Nicaragua, which quickly goes balls up, resulting in the death of the whole squad, including the decoy protagonist you initially play as. Ride to Hell Retribution opens with a montage of scenes from later in the game, two of which a turret section and the first fight are playable. Ratchet and Clank Future Tools of Destruction opens with the bad guy showing up from out of nowhere and laying siege on Metropolis as Ratchet and Clank try desperately to escape as buildings collapse around them. Sakura Wars starts off with the famous scene of Sakura Shinguji entering Tokyo and slicing the Wakiji in half with her sword. Arataka and that is it for this episode, guys. Gone on for nearly 50 minutes. Um, our final three sections will be covered in part four of the action prologue. And that will be web comics, web original, and western animation. Until then, bye. <laughs>